All right, everyone, welcome back. I'm having a little trouble keeping everything straight because I have a video that I just made and I haven't put up yet, and a video that I'm in the middle of that I started a while ago. And now I'm getting sidetracked again, so there's always something going on. What I'm doing today is I'm going to make some front turn signals for the Vespa. Uh, I'll put up a couple pictures right here of what I had in mind. It would probably make the most sense to just buy these. Uh, they're all over eBay and stuff, and I think they're like 10 or 15 bucks. Probably can't get the, the parts to make them for that amount, but you know how I am. This is mostly stuff I have laying around already, and it's not really about saving $5 or something. It's about building something cool, and apparently I don't have enough projects going on. So let's get into it. Okay, so first off, materials. This will give you more than everything you'll need right here. This is a one and a half inch by one foot black Delrin rod. This was from McMaster Car. I am not starting with that. I am starting with a couple of these that I think I picked up at a surplus store, probably 50 cents or maybe a quarter, I don't remember. They're just little black plastic pieces and I thought it would be nice to pick them up, throw them in my box of plastic stuff and maybe someday I'll need them. Someday I need them. But as you see, you could just as easily turn that out of there if you wanted to, and still only use three inches or something of the Dalrin. The other parts I need, I did get the stick of Dalrin because I needed the end caps. Uh, I'm using a little scrap of plexiglass that I had laying around, some LEDs I had laying around, some O-rings I had laying around. Yeah, I'm not really buying anything for this except this rod that I needed half an inch of and I bought a foot of. So, let's get to it. Okay, so these are going to be held into the handlebars by just having a fairly tight fit and an O-ring just to kind of hold it. If you yank, you'll pull them off, but who's gonna yank off? I'm gonna have three screws holding the whole thing together. I'm gonna to show you how I lay that out. Now, obviously, if you're doing this on a milling machine with a DRO, you can just program in that you're doing a bolt circle and it'll lead you right to it. I don't know how many people have a milling machine with a DRO that they're gonna use for this, but this is the way to do it with hand tools. Okay, so I know I want my bolt circle to be about a quarter of an inch in. So I'm gonna set my calipers to 250. You know what, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go 200. I'm using number six hardware, so I don't need a lot of room. So I'm going 200. And then you just need some regular dividers. Now these might already be set pretty close because I've been playing around with this. So first just arbitrarily pick a spot and that's gonna be your first hole. So close it and put it about where you'd think looks like about a third. So that'll land you there, there. Wow, we got that really close. It's a little bit big, so I just closed it a tiny bit. Go back, try it again. Eh, still just a little big. And there, perfect. Then I like to go back the other way just to confirm. Yep. Okay, so that should be a pretty good even bolt circle. So now you could eyeball that. There's no reason you couldn't do a hole here and a hole over here and a hole over here and do whatever you wanted. But then it's only gonna go back on the same direction every time. Rather than doing that, it's nice to get it right because then you can rotate it a third of a turn and it'll line up no matter how you put it. And you're gonna have three layers, so keeping it all straight would be tricky if you didn't have it the same. So I'm gonna drill this out. This will be my pattern for every layer of every piece. Here's the center layer. It's, like I said, just a scrap of plexiglass. So, first try to get this just sort of round-ish. Because the rest of this is gonna be done on the lathe. If you don't have a lathe, you could do this just as easily on a band saw or you know, even a coping saw, just 
cut out the circle and sand it smooth, but I have a lathe, so I'm going to use it. Okay, I'm doing this with my little stare at center punch, but you could just as easily do it with a all anything pokey. Okay, so I'm doing the exact same thing to the plexi as I did to the bottom. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna do 632. I've already pre-drilled. I'm now gonna tap those, and then I have to open up these to be a through hole. All right, here's where you check your work. I have not already tested this, so if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be wrong in front of everyone. And it looks like my holes are a tiny bit off. I think it'll work. These aren't my final screws. These are just some random ones to hold it together for the next step. That one was a little bit off. I just ran the bit through the top two. Don't go all the way through, because you've already tapped that, and that will mess everything up. Okay. Starting to look like the part to the lathe. Okay, this would probably be easier and quicker with a three jaw chuck, but I don't have one anymore. But truing something in a four jaw is always a good skill to have. Not as fast as Adam Booth or Keith Fenner, but good enough. Been machining nothing but stainless all week. It's real nice to switch to plastic. Okay, so I'm just kind of eyeballing that. I just want it just enough room to get the LEDs in there. All right, so that was a 17 64ths bit, which just happened to be the size needed to countersink these screw heads. And I got a little countersink, so my angle's right. So these screws I'm using here are just some ones I had laying around. They're actually center screws from outlet and switch plates. I will probably replace them with some black Allen head ones, but this will be good enough for now. So I'm just going to turn this down to a consistent diameter. There we go. It just took off about ten thousandths. Now I'm going to face it. All right, well here's where we are. If you had started with a solid chunk, the only difference right now would just be that this shoulder wouldn't be turned down at all. But as it is, I need to get down to about 810, and we're at about 870. So I gotta take some off there, and then put in a groove for an O-ring. So I don't know how much of this lathe stuff is coming through. It may or may not stay in the video, because my lathe shakes around all over the place, and I don't know where to put my phone to film, so you might not, you might not be seeing any lathe stuff, but um, I'm gonna try again, see if I can get me turning that down and putting in the O-ring groove.
Okay, there's one, and surprise, I made another off camera. Okay, and these O-rings are uh, R11, but that's how they look. And they just press right into the ends of the handlebars and hold themselves in place. So, onto the electrical. If you've seen my video on making replacement lights for VU meters on vintage electrical equipment or vintage hi-fi, uh, you will have seen these. And I'm just going to use those. I'd kind of like to use amber ones. I have these yellow ones, but they're really dim. I'd rather have bright. And I picked these because they were pretty warm white. So I'm just going to use those so I don't have to order anything. If I lived in a real city, sorry, Iowa City, there would be a store where you could go buy electronic stuff. This is not that city. So here we go. So there you go. Took me a couple hours, but didn't really cost me anything. And you saw how it flashed? That was just a random resistor and a nine volt battery with some unknown amount of voltage. So obviously before I permanently install them, I'm gonna look up the specs on the LEDs and calculate what size resistor to have so it'd be maximum brightness. And wiring them into the scooter is gonna be different or motorcycle or bicycle or whatever. It's going to be different in every case, so I'm not going to tell you how to do that. In my case, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I'm designing a whole Arduino-based system for the Vespa to control the lights and turn signals and all that stuff. So this will be wired into an Arduino, so I'm not going to show you that in this video because your motorcycle or scooter does not have an Arduino in it, I bet. So there we are. Hopefully you learned something or at least made fun of me screwing things up. Thanks for watching.